you know, coming to you live from World Championship in San Jose. Welcome to the Living Legends Podcast. Uh, I'm yeah. just going to roll into it, though. Welcome, everyone, uh, to yet another episode of the Living Legends Podcast, uh, hosted here on Red Zone Rogue's channel. I am not Red Zone Rogue. Uh, but I will be sort of the host for today. Uh, I am Bill from the Spike Feeders. And joining me, as always, are my two lovely co-hosts. Uh, we'll start alphabetically with Az. Hello. Hope everyone's doing well. It's going to be a free-form episode today. Uh, and we should set the precedent, what, now? As to what we're going to be doing? Yeah. Yeah, we might as well. Yeah. So the first half is going to be all sort of flesh and blood, some news and stuff that we've heard from various other outlets and content creators and stuff. And then we're going to go into a second half of the podcast where we're actually going to be creating our characters for an upcoming D&D &D campaign, which I think Kel said uh, recently on your on your video, your 15K, you went, went into it a little bit, didn't you? So, yeah, um, yeah, should be good fun. Yeah, it's uh, essentially going to be a tabletop RPG one shot. So we're going to be using fifth edition uh dnd rules and that's just because i know a lot of people want us to you I, I, once i mentioned that a lot of people are like oh what 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 rule set are you using and i know that they want us to be using pathfinder i know that's like a mm. loaded question they're not <laughs> they ask it because they want it to be pathfinder and i would also like it to be pathfinder but 5e is just what we all know and it's like the easiest to just convert into into flesh and blood um even though i do like yeah. i do like pathfinder so shout out to to you pathfinder fans um and it's gonna mm. be one shot with us and uh, Dead Summer Art, Kale, is going to be the DM, and it's going to be set in the world of Wraith. And he's got, like, this cool story planned for us. And um, if people like it, then who knows what we can do in the future. But it, I think it, for now it's going to be a really fun one-shot. So Definitely. Yeah. Um, exactly. And, yeah, we've we've for those of you who have been sort of following along with that, we did mention this, like, quite a while ago. Um, some amount of it is... Uh, I, I will actually take responsibility for the fact that I have been incredibly <laughs> lazy at making my character. Um, but uh, I think it will be very interesting. I do sort of have a plan now, but it's been a while since I've played D&D. &D, so Kel, who is, uh, I believe, our resident D&D &D expert, owning all 8,000 so. books or whatever it is. I, um, I basically own every single D&D &D 5e book that's not a campaign and I own I own a lot of the campaigns too, but I I own all yeah. the ones that are not campaigns and some of the campaigns. Yeah, yeah. I like so uh, with with some help from my friends, uh, I will be able to uh, finally make good on this. And I would like to also take this time to personally, publicly, and formally apologize to Kale. I know that Kale has been working quite hard on <laughs> uh, on getting this done and is very excited about it. So uh, yeah, so this is officially me using our podcast, our platform as a tool to keep me accountable. <laughs> exactly. There's no turning back now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We've already started filming the episode. Um, but speaking of um, friends, friendship and expertise, uh, we also uh, in the, the realm of introducing people once again, uh, we have Kel from Red Zone Rogue. Hello, hello. Bill said you can find this on Red Zone Rogue, which you can. You're probably watching it here, but you can also listen to this on a myriad of podcast sources. Like we have an RSS feed, um, Spotify, um, Google, uh, the other one, the Apple one, Apple Podcasts. Yeah. So yeah, you can find us all. Like, and the audio is growing as well. Right? The audio listeners are growing as well. So it's good. Average between 700 to 800 audio listens per episode. So, shout out to all the people right now, all 800 of you uh, listening to this. That's awesome. That's super cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we do have a few things as, uh, as sort of mentioned earlier, um, that mm. uh, we do want to sort of go over just in terms of, you know, recent news and things that are notable. Um, the one thing that I would like to bring up just at the at the top of the billing here is um, there was a post on Reddit that caught my eye uh, as well as because of it, there was some uh, just some interest drummed up on the various uh, flesh and blood discords. But uh, apparently in Maryland uh, during this past skir skirmish season, uh, there was a fellow named Austin that won their local skirmish as Data Doll. <laughs> 
which uh, on fair play uh, I mean, it's it's really cool. It's uh, every single comment on these posts is share a list, share a list. I got yeah, I got to exactly. say right now, Austin, if you listen to this podcast, just let us know what what happened. Like, I got to know. Yeah. It, yeah. Co- comment, please. Extremely I, I will, interesting. <laughs> I will pin your comment to this video. Uh, also, like, like, great job. Like, that's yeah. that's incredible. <laughs> so. Yeah 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 wow like my my local skirmish um i did okay i got to top eight uh i was playing ira but uh just had a absolute hell of a time against wizards i kept drawing all red hands on their action turns and it's like well it's nothing i can really do there so i mean i, I was playing a, a pretty no brain uh hand on the table sort of deck uh not even date at all so that's like crazy i i'm actually genuinely like extremely impressed um yeah so yeah that's, that's amazing that's like, one what, thing what, that what, i wanted to highlight for sure what do you even do what do you even do as data doll you play attacks out and then try and boost into your items which then get you incremental value as you carry yeah. on and try and survive with three intellect yeah oh well i mean data doll <laughs> has a really good specialization at least so that's true that's true yeah. Yeah. is like objectively powerful um yeah. It's uh, it's just interesting how, you know, you're able to leverage that sort of thing in not only a faster format, but also with less intellect and only having, you know, you're looking for yeah. a specific copy where you can only run two copies of uh, of this of this card to really get you into a good spot. So there must have been games where he just didn't see microprocessor. Um, yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's probably pretty likely. Um, or maybe maybe this I guess was with that uh... sort of. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, like when you're boosting so many cards away, I guess you do see a lot of your deck when you have forty cards, right? That is a you good point. You see a lot of it, and because it's being boosted into play directly, I guess you can sometimes get it, you know, pretty quickly. So yeah, who knows? Maybe this was wow, the one yeah, string of coincidences where you just happen to have like microprocessor turn one, like every single game. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know, that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was uh, I was having a discussion with one of the players uh, just like before the game, uh, before our game started. And uh, I was like, oh, like I brought Ira because I knew that it was going to be consistent. But I should have just brought KO and just tried to 26 people on turn one every time. Yeah. And uh, and he looked around. We were only 13 people in our skirmish. And he's like, this is the size of skirmish where that can happen. Like that can just take down a tournament. Oh, gotcha. Um because you you do have to win a 33 percent chance a couple times but mm. realistically we only had four rounds so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah, yeah anyway oh, uh, like cool. i said that's something that i wanted to to highlight good job austin uh for doing that that's sweet um yeah. really like it when people sort of are able to find success with things that aren't sort of in the established meta that's something that matters a lot to me personally so okay so uh, we got data doll with some LL points and blitz. Who's going to be the first merchant? Let's 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 see Ooh. that. Who's going to be the first merchant? Genus or Cavdane? Because I'm pretty sure Cavdane doesn't have any points. Um, no. Nah. So there you go. Challenge, yeah. Ch- challenge yeah. to, to all the flesh and blood players out there. What is Genus's <laughs> effect again? I think it's like everybody else gets to maybe draw a card. It's yeah. Each other hero may put a card from their hand on the bottom of their deck. If they do, they if they do, they draw a card and you get a silver token. And then if they if nobody does that, then you get to draw a card. That costs two resources. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I mean, if there's a way to leverage silver, maybe you do knick knack bric a brac OTK with like uh, <laughs> potions of strength, and you're like. Yeah. Try to try to get him with like a fire breathing that you just pump up to just fire breathing potion of strength them for like twenty. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I actually uh, speaking of fire breathing, I saw a really funny post about Benji when uh, people were talking about mm-hmm. what to bring to skirmish, and uh, they know somebody noted that with uh, silken ghee, the yes. new chest piece from the new set, yes. you can pop it to make fire breathing cost one less and also have base power two, so that it's unblockable. Yeah. And then in the reaction step, just pitch your entire hand to buff up fire breathing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Like yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if that's, <laughs> that's as good as just like attacking with a no. whole bunch of like tigers and then playing like benji's specialization to draw like eight cards <laughs> or whatever yeah like maybe not but 
hilarious. <laughs> hey, if yeah. someone if someone kills you with that, like you gotta you gotta give them the respect, right? I would be like, oh, yeah. I'd be like, oh sweet, <laughs> like it sucks that I died, but like that's really cool. I just got killed by Circus Benji. The Circus yeah. Benji. Yeah, so uh, once again, great job. Uh, some other news that we got, uh, which is unfortunate for me specifically, um, but you know, I think it, it does represent something good overall. Um, is that James White did confirm that uh, where he was on uh, Pitch Perfect. Um, yes. Sort of talking yep. about some stuff. And he confirmed that uh, there will not be PVE in 2023, mm -hmm. um, which I believe Kel mentioned that um, we never got like a sort of hard and fast date anyway. They never really promised 2023 to us at all. A lot yeah. of people were hoping like me specifically i know that i was really looking forward to it but yeah i i put out a couple huh. videos talking about pve and i basically said what james had said in an interview with flake and that he said that 2023 would be the earliest that's the mm -hmm. only thing he'd ever said about the time frame is that 2023 mm -hmm. would be the earliest and he said this back in 2022 um and so now we know that well it's not gonna be 2023 either so yeah yeah just goes it's... so quick doesn't it just just, you just yeah. before you know it you're in 2023 and then it's it's mental Do, what 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 was actually did you watch it then Kel? that which one interview the, the pitch, pitch perfect, perfect one oh yeah 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 i watched the whole thing yeah mm -hmm. cuz i haven't i've haven't, i've been away this weekend so i've been able to catch up with it so what 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 did what, what did he say like specifically about it anything he just said that all? he he's not sure where people got the idea that it would be out this year, but that oh, okay. um, they're still working on it. They want it to be really good. They're they're going to release it when it's ready, and it's not going to be this year. That's basically what he yeah. said. Yeah, well, that's the best. Like, that's the I best was... outcome, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Release it when they're ready too. Exactly. You don't want to rush anything, like the bloody video game industry does. It's like put out something in untested beta. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, fix it, it with DLCs later. I think it was. I, I, yeah, I don't exactly. know if this is like a misquote, but I think there's like a Shigeru Miyamoto quote where like you can only release something once, like once mm -hmm. it's released. That's like, right. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something like that. You can only release it once, and if it sucks, then it sucks forever. Um, yeah, because like kind yeah. of the damage is done. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, exactly. uh, but yeah, like I was definitely holding out hope for PVE in 2023, again, just because it's something that I'm genuinely very excited for. Um, it's something that I know uh, Jim from the Spike Feeders is also very excited for because uh, he feels like if they do it well, um, this will be something that we can make a ton of content about and it would be really easy and it would probably be really engaging and fun. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I like, I have plans. <laughs> I have plans. I've literally, I think I literally told James at Worlds over dinner. I was like, when PVE comes out, like, if if you're gonna like give it to any content creators or whatever, I'm like, please, please, just I want to make content about this. I I have so many ideas <laughs> to make really cool, well produced like PVE content. We're gonna be doing some D and D stuff today, but I watch. Um, a decent amount of like D and D things, and I'm like, oh, I can make a really cool like flesh and blood PVE stuff with some aspects of these D and D things that I watch. It could be so cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's uh, like you said, Cal. It's it's very much. I would prefer them to put out something that they feel good about as opposed to something that they feel that they have to put out. Um, yeah. Like yeah. if it's not ready, it's not ready, and that's totally fine. I'm personally you know a little crushed but I'll, I'll be able to manage <laughs> so yeah i mean like <laughs> like it's it's much better to put out something that's like really really good and you know have people wait like a year or two than to put out something that that's half baked and sucks like then you just have yeah. a then you just have a product that sucks and then who cares if it came out tomorrow yeah. if it sucks like yeah i do genuinely feel uh i've said this before and i said it just before we started recording but I feel like this will th this has the potential at least to be flesh and blood's commander um, to like put it in magic terms where it's like this is the thing that is sort of easy for people to pick up, easy for people to try really marketable. Um, if it's fun and people want to play it a bunch, then like that's great. And then also they'd be I'm sure there are other 
games that have done it but um, the first sort of big card game that has successfully done a like single player or potentially multiplayer collaborative um mode yeah um which would be really cool yeah it's, it's interesting i think if they do it and it's a big success i think it'll be the first one that's a huge success because we do have yeah. Uh, so like Ashes, people who play like Ashes Reborn has this uh, single player uh, like co-op mode. I think Keyforge now has a single player co-op mode. Um, traditionally speaking, uh, Legend of the Five Rings had one and the World of Warcraft card game had one. So there's like precedent for this in the past. Oh, there's a really cool like dice game called Dice Throne where they have like a, like a campaign mode that's really cool where you like go around a little map and then you fight against like bosses and it's cooperative. Um, that I think honestly is what I'm hoping that the flesh and blood one turns out to be kind of like a cool campaign thing. Um, but uh, if it's successful, it will be the first one that is like widely successful. And I'm not saying like the, the wow TCG one like wasn't bad or the other ones weren't like, I mean, that they weren't good, but um, those games don't exist anymore. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've set the foundation, haven't they? They've set the foundation for the fact that obviously this is a character driven game. So that can speak to mm. pretty much anyone, you know. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get into it and say, "Oh, I like the look of that character, or I like the way that character plays, or looks, or feels, or whatever." So it it sort of tailors to that audience straight away. You know, any audience essentially can get into it because they can get into a character rather than a system. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a great way to bring loads of different characters in, different people in. So definitely yeah, good. One hundred percent. You said you didn't watch the interview, so. I will say this. This is something no. that James specifically said in the interview, and he said that uh, their game, Flesh and Blood, is the most RPG-like game uh, currently out there, where you have your character and you you equip them with your armor and all this kind of stuff. And I think it really echoes like what what As said. Basically, James said more or less the same kind of deal, where they're like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you can't you can't you can't sort of if if, if you're looking to sort of bring other people into your game that might not might not necessarily be a gamer you know the best way to yeah. do that is to sort of bring them in with character driven stuff and that's what flesh and blood is already isn't it so yeah. you know it's, if you want to appeal to mass audiences you want to be character driven rather than anything else i like, think literally so. when i first started playing flesh and blood way way you know years ago when they first sent me those uh those those uh, hero decks when i tried to get robin to play test with me so i could actually make videos and you know talk about it uh, the first thing she said is like is there a female character? Like that's literally the first thing she said. I'm like, oh yeah, here's, here's, here's. bloody loads of them. <laughs> well, back back then there was only Dorinthia. I got technically Ira, um, and I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like here's Dorinthia, and she's like, cool, I'm playing that character. And so like it's that kind of thing where like you know people do they, this really matters to people. Like the characters, exactly, and yeah. The, the heroes are probably uh, one of the, the biggest things that the biggest strengths of Flesh mm. and Blood. The the, the competitive Don't gameplay. Try. The gameplay itself is really good, but like, I think the heroes are really what keep people around and get get non super competitive people into it. And that's the thing yeah. as well. Like, we'll get we'll we'll touch on this as well because obviously we're going into a whole bloody D and D section. But that sort of attributes itself to the the whole party and cooperative mechanic is that you you everyone everyone plays a different role. There we go. There's a player's handbook full of the roles, full of all it, different things. It's you interesting. Can you can you can actually see how my camera is reversed because <laughs> the player's handbook is not in the right not in the right order. But that's okay. Yeah. Well to us it's okay. It's a just Discord thing. It just reverses yeah. it for you. Yeah yeah. I don't know why it does that. Um yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Not sure either. But yeah. Um but yeah <clears throat> so really really excited for when that's in a, a spot that they can put it out um that'll be something that i think we jump on i think all three of us are basically just as hyped for it um it's going to be a really cool thing to see w however it ends up becoming a thing however it materializes i think it's going to be really good um gotcha. yeah but uh yeah and then f uh, one last thing that i think is is worth mentioning as well uh just on the on the topic of getting hype about stuff um, there was also confirmation uh, in the same interview that James White did that uh, the first taste of Dusk Till Dawn, uh, they're going to be revealing some spoilers at uh, Pro Tour Baltimore, which is uh, just at the end of the month, uh, starting April 28th. Yes. So that's oh, from yeah. the time of recording about two and a half weeks. From so, now. I, OK, I have one interesting thing to say about this. Uh, it turns out. Last week's podcast, we talked about a lot of art that we think is going to be from Dust Till Dawn. 
Well, it turns oh, out yeah. I saw this on Twitter and I was like, well, crap. Well, if that... So long story short, uh, those images no longer exist on the Flesh and Blood website. So it would <laughs> seem that someone had accidentally posted them when they shouldn't have. And um, if we knew about that, like if, if we knew that they weren't supposed to be, we probably wouldn't have talked about them. Um, yeah. So, oops. And then, like, uh, uh, I think my favorite comment was um, uh, Enrique Lindner, who actually works for Flesh and Blood right now. He, he works for Legend Story Studios. He does art for the game, obviously, but he is part of the team as a concept artist. And he also does some of the art for the um, the stories, like the, the, the story art. Anyway, he he commented and he, and he basically said that yeah, it wasn't supposed to be. Uh, some someone made it made it oopsie, <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, "Well, hilarious. he's like, well, it's out there, so that gets yeah, out there. brilliant." It's well, and specifically with um, flesh and blood, the flesh and blood community. Honestly, I'll say as a whole, um, they've done things on uh, the website that sort of reward people. This wasn't even really digging into stuff, but you know, like mm. um, there was the the story for um, uh, the preview to Outsiders, or the one that was like Christmas themed, Arachne. and uh, yeah, the Arachne one, and it had um, the Razor's Edge like hidden in it, in like a little hyperlink. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So right. I don't think it like it's unfortunate that it happened, but it was you know people are pretty on top of things when LSS reveals stuff, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, exactly. It is what it is. Uh, it was there, so we talked about it. Um, we, Roger. When we talked about it, I will <laughs> note when we talked about it, the yeah. images were still on the website. So we, we yeah, didn't there was know. nothing. We didn't know. And yeah, so uh, Lindner did say he says they were prematurely released, as far as I as far as I know. But there is no such thing as putting the rabbit back in the hat. I guess. So. Yeah, it's it's out there already. Um, and I mean, all it did was generate some hype. So, oh, people are super stoked about it. I'm, I'm into that, <laughs> like us included. Absolutely. Like. And so, the reason yeah. I mentioned that is because I have a feeling we might be seeing those images again at Pro Tour Baltimore. Um, yeah. yeah. So that'd be really funny if that was like the previews that they're talking about, where it's yeah. just the art. <laughs> oh no! And people are like, yeah. "Yay!" Oh, okay. I do have one juicy piece of speculation. Uh, that I just came up with now. Because for Dynasty, what they did is they showed the Emperor, right? Didn't they show the Emperor at Pro Tour um, yes. Leal. Leal? And so, yeah. I don't know. I have a feeling they might... I have a feeling they might show a hero. Like, I have a strong feeling. This is no insider information or anything. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling we might see a new hero, and I think it might be Prism. Like... That makes the most sense to me that they're like, okay, we want to show something cool and spicy for everyone to get excited about this set that James White is clearly very excited about. And not only do we have a Prism statue coming, like, mm -hmm. like Prism is like a very beloved character, and I think LSS knows this. And so I think Prism would be the, the key one. Also, they they did they they showed the 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 art for Prism and Shiana. Um yeah. that one was official, yeah. like shown on the the flesh and blood uh, Twitter and everything. So that's my call for Baltimore prism card spoiled giant, giant prism. Yep. Yeah. It would make sense. There's a lot of stuff going on as well. We've got a lot of stuff to look forward to in Baltimore, like worlds is going to be announced, isn't it? And Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. All the, all the good stuff's going to happen. So I can't wait to hear what's coming out of Baltimore in a few weeks. J Jim is going to get my, one of my plague hives signed by Mark pool and then pick up my art from uh, Iswardi, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting one. Um, mm. but uh, but yeah. So until then, uh, we can do nothing but speculate. But the other thing that we can do is uh, talk about D and D. Oh, if you both are interested. I think there's one other yeah. thing that, as mentioned, he he wrote that we should talk about before we do that, and that is um the let me pull up what it says. Um, Did I write something? Did oh, yeah. It's a, write something? Yeah, it says, I've been pissed. Tall Timmy confirmed that James White told him that LSS are hiring 20 plus people uh, for the next 18 to 24 uh, yes. months. Um, mm. And I can also say that these people are probably going to be 
I don't remember if he said it's going to be, if he said that in the J, in the interview with uh, Pitch Perfect or if that was in the Tall Timmy video, but James also said mm. at some point over the last few days that they are expanding their uh, social play uh, dev team and they're going to have separate dev teams. One dev team, which That's is their it. current dev team, is going to be working exclusively on competitive play, competitive balance, and they're going to have a separate dev team devoted to more social and casual aspects, which is probably um, PVE and other such things. Maybe starter decks, maybe classic battles type products. Um, yeah. So that is a thing that is that he did say. And 18 to 24 people is a lot because they only have like 30 people right now. So they're like mm-hmm. going to be almost doubling their team. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a, that's, a, that's a really big deal. Um, and yeah, like that that's a big thing for the company. It also means that the company is growing to the point where they can afford that, which is I think is a very good sign for how LSS is doing. Like you don't just randomly mm-hmm. hire 24 full-time people, right? Um, no. <laughs> uh, and then... There's two other things that I quickly want to mention. I don't. We can't really talk a lot about them because we don't really know. But one of them is that there will be additional cosplay prizes um, at all events, and they'll start at Baltimore. James White said that he had seen like so many cool people show up with these amazing costumes, and only one person gets a prize. And he's like, "Well, yeah. we we need to change that. So they're going to be changing that. Um, so there's there's going to be additional prize support for cosplayers." Um, at events and then the the last thing and this is the most exciting thing for me personally also it sounds terrifying is that james white confirmed that they are working on an all arcane set we have outsiders what the bloody hell (laughs) yeah we have outsiders which is an all physical set and i don't remember if it was melody or lane who asked this but it was on the pitch perfect podcast you can go listen to it and watch it but they said, well, we have Outsiders, all physical. Is there going to be an all arcane, like an opposite? And James White said, yes, they are currently working on it. So, Oh, my goodness me. Take that for what you will. It sounds insane. Um, also, Necromancer confirmed. Also, uh, Cleric confirmed. 100% Necromancer confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's a joke, by the way. If you're necromancer listening. confirmed. Okay. Oh, necromancer like confirmed. C- confirmed. Hundred <laughs> percent necromancer confirmed. Nor. Oh god. So, y'all have that yeah, to look you. forward to. Um, all arcane set. Is it going to be the next set after Dust Till Dawn? Who knows? He just said they're working on it. Um, and it's it... going to be based in the Savage Lands as well. <laughs> That would be the biggest <laughs> me the, me brute the me rune chant troll, brute the biggest troll ever. That would be it would the be. biggest. Oh my god! And the brute players are like, oh, finally we get we get <laughs> brute support because I think brutes are some of the loudest players. Are like, well, we we want brute, more are. brute support, and it's like savage. No, it would be all against really. Savage It'd be really funny, too, if they got a bunch of attacks that were, like, sub-six attack things, or just all non-attacks. Yeah. <laughs> it's all... It's and, it all cared, like... and it cared about coin-flipping mechanics. <laughs> yeah, they can't oh even my... use Gambler's Glove. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Didn't even give them that. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, no. Uh, it's, like a anyway. mon- it's like the monkey's paw, right? It's like... You you ask for brute support, monkey's paw goes down. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all like, of these attacks are for two. Yeah, it's like oh, it, introducing the new brute hero, shaman brute, and it's like all like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my god. There's uh, it's it's funny though with uh, so the all arcane set. The idea of that terrifies me mm, because me too, me too. Uh, the current state of the game, I think favors arcane damage over other sources of damage. Um, I think that the current options that we have available, it is much easier to block physical damage than it is to block arcane damage. And I yeah. think that's just how it is. Yeah, um, yeah it's because like uh, you can have a red card that blocks for three, but to actually prevent three, you need <clears throat> specifically blue cards to do so. Yeah. So if you're not running a deck with a lot of blue cards, then sucks to be you, I guess. Eat, eat yeah. that Aether Wildfire. It's uh, yeah, it's it's tough, but I do think and I'm willing to 
uh, hang my hat on this. If they are willing to go as far as to make a set that is entirely arcane damage, I think that probably means they have a plan in place to make it easier, a little bit more accessible to block arcane damage. So, yeah. is it terrifying? Yeah, I'm going to have a nightmare about this set um, at some point. Uh -huh. But I think it does also imply some good things, uh, some sort of change up to the current status quo um, and make it so that, you know, wizards don't just still run rampant in blitz um, because arcane damage is so unbelievably difficult to interact with. <laughs> well, they have printed stuff like obviously uh, Oasis Respite, Peace of Mind is, oh no, that only prevents physical damage. Peace of Mind is only one. physical, but Oasis Respite uh -huh. does do uh does do any damage I mean, they have been printing yeah. some side case common equipment maybe they're testing it so we had quell and we also have the seekers yeah. pieces both quell and yeah. Seeker, seekers do any prevent any kind of damage so maybe they're testing mm. the waters with those those sort of effects and maybe there'll be more in the future um yeah maybe more spell void like they, they've, they've been they've been kind of like dabbling with some stuff um i i think it also tells me that they are there's got to be a new class with that set. Like, you, we don't have enough arcane classes to make like a, a good draft set. Like, what would it be yeah. like? Like a rune blade and and wizard the set. Like, I technically <laughs> technically illusionist can do a little bit, but not not mm -hmm. really. It's not like their it's not like their thing. It's That's like not their. It's like their one card in the deck. It's like burn them all. Does like arcane, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless it's like, like dual. Unless it's like dual classes again. Maybe we'll see. Uh, yeah. yeah, Brian said they that's not off the table if they need to do it. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I'd be interested. Yeah. Um, or necromancer yeah. confirmed. Yeah. Necromancer. necromancer confirmed. Just, just have a bunch confirmed. of skeletal mages. Necromancer confirmed. Just, yeah. Confirmed. Necromancer confirmed. Hundred percent. Hundred percent necromancer confirmed. <laughs> Shout out to Ian. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, New Zealand always, accents, always cool. shout out to you. I can't. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Well, or maybe cleric, oh. which which uh, kind of leads us into D and D. Hey. Brilliant. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That was a that was a good one. Um, that was a good but, one. But uh, but yeah. So for those of you who've been following along, um, you probably know sort of what this is about. Um, but for those of you who are uh, coming into this that are totally brand new. Um, we were in talks uh, a while ago to start up a um, flesh and blood themed Dungeons and Dragons campaign Yes. Um, that, as we mentioned earlier, is going to be DM'd by Dead Summer Art, um, who is well, well, well more versed in uh, flesh and blood lore than I am, at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think they'll be able to um, do a pretty good job at not only building the space, but also uh, improvising on the fly and making things still fit within um, within the, the world of Wraith. Oh, yeah. um, so what that also means for us is that we have to create world accurate characters um yeah. at least mm -hmm. as accurate as we want to make them um although i feel pretty obligated to make something that would fit within the world um not only because i i feel like i'd be a buzzkill otherwise but also uh kale mm -hmm. would probably be upset so yeah yeah of course of course so like, <laughs> like we want this to be like a good like fun time like it's a good fun yeah. adventure in the world of wraith right um and uh to to set the timeline for this i'm pretty sure I have a feeling that I put out the initial tweet, like just being like, oh, we should do a D&D &D thing. And then I tagged a bunch of people, including Bill as Miss Chalice, DM Ramada, like a, a bunch of people. And uh, I think we I think I did that before we started the Living Legends podcast. Yeah, I, it was like, yeah, a, I, think so. I think so. So that we've been working on this for a little while. Um, and I think initially Kale wanted it to set it in Aria. I'm not going to say where it's set now, because I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's not set in Arya anymore. It's set somewhere mm -hmm. else. I will be... I have my character already, so I will not be making my character today. Uh, I can tell you what my character is, though. Um, and it's a character that has changed multiple times. And it's really funny, because I started mm -hmm. making this character before Assassin was even a class. So I'm playing an Assassin. I'm playing a Rogue. Ob obviously. Obviously, I'm playing a Rogue. Um, rogue, subclass, Assassin. Um... And so um, I started to make this class before D 
Dynasty even came out. And so Dynasty came out. I'm like, hey, cool. There's an assassin. <laughs> and then Outsiders came out. And I'm like, hey, cool. More assassin stuff. And then more lore about the spider. So I can actually like make my character in lore. So my character is a spider assassin. Um, uh, I am playing the character villain who has been in the, m- the most recent art. I was debating whether I was like, oh, should I play a female character? Should I make another character? I'm like, you know, I already have this character. I already have like this cool art. I have an idea of the character and the personality. So I'm going to be playing villain for this. Um, and what's kind of cool about her and, um, like how I'm going to role play it. I'm not going to do like a change my voice, but her, uh, lore wise, her mask changes her voice. So no one actually knows what she really sounds like. I already talked to, to Kale about this. So every 24 hours, the mask, uh, changes what her voice is. Um, That's so, cool. Cool. Yeah. so yeah, so it helps keep her anonymity and it's like, like, I was like trying to think what would be a cool flavor thing that would be super beneficial to an assassin, but not like break gameplay or combat balance. And I'm like, that seems really cool. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and That's I don't, very I don't know yet if it's magic or if it's black tech, like if it's like uh tech mm-hmm. from, from metrics, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll think of that later, but, um, um, yeah. So that's the character I'm playing. I'm playing a spider assassin, uh villain. And, uh, I'm really excited. I, I I try not to be like super, super like uh, sweaty about mm-hmm. making my character, but I think she's pretty. <laughs> I think she's pretty good. Like not super overpowered, but pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's what I'm playing. What are, What are you guys? What are you guys thinking about playing? Because we're going to be building uh, their characters uh, as and Bill's characters today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, as how about how about you go first? What do you uh, What do you have yeah. on the brew? So um, initially, I, I did I did make a character initially. This this goes to show how long ago this was because my initial character was a rune blade, oh. right? Uh, and th- that was the first ca- that was the first sort of flesh and blood class that I ever got into was viscerai and rune blade. Um, so he was initially a rune blade character, but that now has now changed into more of a ranger uh, character that does use a uh, does use both a bow and a sword. Um, mm-hmm. So I want 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 his ties to be metrics and the pits, but he resides in metrics, um, but has ties to the pits, but doesn't like to do all the shadowy stuff. He's more yeah. of like a bounty, lives a high life in the pit in the yeah. in metrics, but also has ties to the pits as well. That, that's um, actually really interesting because um, I haven't fleshed out the full story of a uh, of villain, but I figure that she also has mm-hmm. ties to the pits with the spider, but she's from Mysteria. And you can tell that by the way her yes. outfit. Her outfit looks very like Mysterian outfits, very like Japanese Kunoichi style. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Both, both have ties. Yeah, I like the things. hybrid. I like the hybrid thing as well because it ties like ties a couple of worlds together, uh, explores a couple of different things, and yeah, my my character's going to be sort of cyberpunky because uh, I think um, he's he's got he's rides rides around on a motorbike, a steam steam powered motorbike. Got your T bone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a bit of T Bone, but like a cloud, cloud strife, Final Fantasy VII type vibe. Because um, yeah, Final Fantasy another big, massive influence for me and in gaming and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so he's going to use a, a sword, probably powered by steam or something, and then also a a, a bow which has like weird contraptions and stuff on it. Oh, kind of like uh, a, like Redliner. Like if you look at like Redliner, Redliner kind of has like weird steampunky bits on it. No, that's exact. That's exactly what I did. I because I got a piece of art, like concept art for the character, and I actually mm-hmm. edited a red liner on his back. I remember. Oh, okay. you, I remember doing that now. Oh, cool. Yeah. That so that sense. is that is true. <laughs> nice. But, um. But yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I think we're doing. Oh no, I haven't. I haven't actually looked at my my villain character sheet for a while. I think we're doing level five. Let me go ahead and take a look. I'll pull it up right now. Yeah, I think um, rings a bell. Yeah, because you get a few abilities, don't you, up to like level five, and it's not—it's mm-hmm. not too over overpowered. You should get a couple of like cool character class things, but nothing too OP up to level five. Yeah, I feel level five is like a good um, starting point. And you know, when I when yeah, I yeah. do D and D, when we start new D and D sessions, level we either do three or five. Um, level mm-hmm. one is just like it's fine, it's fine, but I like starting a it's little. It's pretty bit. slow. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just whatever. Yeah. Um, while you while you find that, I might as well go into my 
uh, idea yeah, for, for my character. Um, mm. So something that uh, just was really interesting to me already was uh, I wanted to play a cleric because um, I knew that cleric was on the, the docket for flesh and blood as a class to be uh, revealed in the future. Uh, and also just every good uh, adventuring party needs a healer of some variety. Um, so I, I wanted to sort of take up that mantle and uh, sort of do like a like a battle ready cleric, um, maybe with like a mace or something like that. Um, and I didn't really know what to do with my backstory. I didn't know what type of character I wanted to do uh, until and mm. I think I mentioned this in another podcast. Um, the idea that I currently have for the character that I'm going to create is going to be based off of uh, a little a little tiny uh, manga slash anime uh, that some of you may have heard of called Chainsaw Man. Um, I am a big fan of Chainsaw Man. <laughs> it is really, really good. Uh, I just totally binged it. It's the first time I've bought actual physical manga uh and i have all uh or at least i have 11 of them those are the ones that i was able to get my hands on i think nice. at this point now there are more um you dirty weeb but... <laughs> <laughs> i know Sa i know says the guy with like <laughs> thousands of dollars of anime figures in the background <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so i liked it a lot and uh something that really uh spoke to me i would say is uh, the sort of interaction that one of the characters that's re revealed in like chapter 108 or something like that, uh, or sorry, chapter 98. Uh, there's a character called Asa Mitaka who uh, makes a contract. I don't want to spoil it for people, but she makes a contract with somebody uh, with a devil. And it's kind of at like an hour of dire need. And she makes a deal with this devil, not really understanding who they were or what the consequences of the action were. But it's just you need to be alive and you want to live. Right. I can help you. And so I took that and I kind of want to do that with uh, this cleric character and have them be like somebody who was very, um, you know, entrenched in um you know, Solana and make sure that they uh, care about the light and everything like that. But then uh, just they were at death's door. Their gods weren't answering and They were like, please, somebody, anybody like help me. I need help. And uh, uh -huh. they spoke maybe just a little bit too loud. And somebody from the monastery was like, hey, you want to you want to make a deal or something? I can I can help you out. <laughs> um, and now they have to live with that sort of consequence of um aligning themselves with somebody that is totally totally foreign and separate from their values and and core beliefs um but they made a deal they shook on it in a conflict with the, with the character and already love it yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's a built-in flaw <laughs> well yeah. we, all, we yeah. all all three of us have like dark ish ties then like we have ties to like the pits or like the monastery or something so I think mm -hmm. that helps set a good common thread between the characters as to like why the characters would know each other or work with each other. Yeah. Cause it, it would be kind of weird if it, if Bill was just like, he's a light warrior from Solana. It's like, why the hell would he work with like a, <laughs> like a pits assassin and like this, the steampunk guy. <laughs> this is the cloud strife <laughs> looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, it's, it's interesting as well because obviously uh without without spoiling the uh the asa Mita Mitaka, uh the character i can see on this little wicker page i've never seen the thing by the way mm -hmm. but um that there, there is an entity in the D, D book called the fiend which is hmm. which is like one, one of the main sort of devil-ish characters that you can pledge allegiance to if you're mm -hmm. a, if you're a warlock and mm. that's like the that's like the opposite of what a paladin would normally pledge their allegiance to. So it's yeah. an interesting thing for your character to do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very yeah, it's very um, warlocky, uh, uh, like for D and D terms. It's very warlocky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I um, that's another one of the things that I, I think is going to be interesting is um, uh, we are each allowed a a magic item mm. of some variety, um, which I think will be, be really cool. It has to be a certain power level. I think it just has to be yeah. like around plus one, which I can't remember if that's common magic or whatever. Um, but it's around it's around plus one. Um, you know, 
that that the, that's that's yeah, part of it. We we can't be like uh, you know a godly legendary item that just like oh god no yeah. annihilates everyone <laughs> like yeah, no like ap- apocalypse sense. daggers or anything you know yeah yeah um, something something that I think I am going to do because one of the traits that Asa uh, has as part of her pact with this devil is that she's able to make weapons out of anything that she owns. Um, which obviously that in its in and of itself is like too strong for a plus one type of thing. That sounds but, like a Zuri. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just everything. Ha! Yeah, surprise. Um, but yeah, like something alongside that. I wanted to make my uh, my magic item something similar to like Heart of Fiendel. Um, because I feel like if there's a cleric class, Heart of Fiendel is going to be really good because hmm. I they'll likely have something to do with. Um, with life gain um but i'm thinking maybe it could be you know something that used to be uh a good like a a totem of something good and pure or whatever that just like this devil is sort of sitting in like just like a little armchair that he's just like hey how you doing um (laughs) yeah i uh so like okay i can tell you what i did for mine so i mean i have the i have the the oni mask but um but i think i called it the the demon mask but that's not my actual Mm -hmm. like my 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 one magical item. Um, I'm actually uh, I talked with Kale about it. So I, I have I have twin daggers. So I have, I have pair daggers. So it's technically two items, but it it counts as one because I use them together. Um, mm-hmm. And they're called the Black Blades. Uh, I took a lot of inspiration from Elden Ring, the Black Blade from Elden Ring, and um, they're just paired daggers with a plus one enhancement bonus, and they also deal an additional one d four necrotic. Um, mm-hmm. and that is like kind of on theme with like the pits and like the plagues. And so they, they deal like this necrotic, yeah. you know, kind of, kind of like plague, that's good plague damage. And mm-hmm. so like, that's the kind of power level we're talking about. Like basically yeah. daggers, which are traditionally weak weapons, one D four. Um, and they deal an additional one D four, like necrotic. So that's, that's what I'm working with. Um, yeah. Right. Sounds yeah. good. Villain has an absurd uh, dex dex modifier though, so my like my t- my yeah. on- my to hit is like plus six <laughs> plus six for for uh, for these daggers. So <laughs> is your is your is your character based on on stealth though, or like backstabby assassin type stuff? Or oh yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I, I give I can give you a, I can give you a quick rundown of my character to maybe kind of start the the creation process here. So mm-hmm. um. Yeah. Character villain. She's a rogue assassin. Background is folk hero. So I don't think we have to go specific into the backgrounds, but they do give you a, a smidgen of like a little bit, bit benefit. And the idea is that she's a folk hero because she's kind of like this um, character that a lot of the common folks know. She's known as like the demon, and it's kind of like a Krampus kind of situation where like if uh, if you're bad, like it's, it, there's always like these these stories. Like if you're bad, then the demon will come and punish you. Like you'll you'll end up with your, your, with your throat cut, um, yeah. And so that that's where I got like the folk hero kind of background. Uh, she's a human. I don't think there's much else other than humans in flesh and blood, unless you want to get really weird and off off of the main heroes. Like, if you want to be Reinar esque and say you're an orc, I guess that works. But yeah, <laughs> or if you want to be the, the the dwarf guy or something, but most of them are, are humans for now and then uh alignment i just chose neutral because that's exactly what spider assassins are they only go for whatever is is paid but it's just like yeah the, their moral compass is all on their contracts which good or bad they're gonna do it um yeah and then i'm not, I'm not gonna bore everyone with my stats and everything um but i do for for just reference i have 46 hit points i think i am level five here um, my stat spread is pretty basic. Uh, I did what we're probably going to do here is you roll 46 and then you take away one of the dice and that is a score. And then you do that a bunch of times. Um, typically you do it six times, but we can do it like eight times and then take away two of the lowest ones. Um, mm-hmm. and so my stat breakdown is like strength 12. My dex is 20. So I rolled an 18 and then I also get an additional plus two from, um, leveling up. Um, yeah. And then my con is 16, int is 14, my wisdom is 9, she's not very wise, and then her charisma is 14. No. Um, okay. And yeah, then for the actual, like, abilities that I have, um, I think I did, like, like a plus additional bonus into my dex to make it into 20, because I really, my dex score is really important. 
and I have proficiencies in dex and int for saving throws. And then my actual skills that are really high are acrobatics, uh, athletics, yeah. perception, stealth. And then I had two more because of a couple other things. Uh, so they are actually in animal handling and survival, which I think uh, they came from a different... Folk hero, probably. They probably came from folk hero, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my That's actual good, abilities are uh, assassinate, because I am an assassin, which is uh, really nasty. I have played an assassin in D&D before, and I get advantage on anyone who hasn't taken a turn in combat, and any surprised enemy is auto crit. And um, Oh, yeah. And I have two weapons. Well, you're going to love my flashbang arrows, then, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, and so I can like double attack, double auto, double auto crit. Um, and Absolutely. then I al- then I also have sneak attack, which is three d six, which I get sneak attack on any enemy I have advantage on, and also I have advantage on any enemy who hasn't taken turn in combat. So I will be sneak attacking a lot. Um, yeah. I have thieves nice. can't, which means it's like a you can do hand signs to talk. Uh, I have expertise. Oh, this is a this is a rogue skill. Expertise. I get double proficiency bonuses, and I specifically chose stealth, acrobatics, investigation, and perception. So those are the four, um, mm-hmm. the double bonuses I got. And then I have cunning action, which means I can use a bonus action to dash, disengage, or hide. Uh, I have uncanny dodge, which means I can take uh, half damage on any uh, attack that I can see um, as a reaction. And then I have, this is just a basic thing, it's not an additional thing, two up and fighting, uh, which means I can make an attack as a bonus action with no ability modifier um, to damage. And so mm-hmm. that, that's basically my character. Um, and those are the things yeah. that we're going to basically go through for Bill and Az. So. That's what oh. I mean. You, st- you, you, get, you, get, you get quite a lot of you get quite a lot of cool skills, even though you're only level five, you still yeah. get quite a lot of traits and skills that you get access to. Um, which is which is brilliant. And yeah, it's not I, like just like level one, you know. So we get loads of good stuff. Yeah, like for example, <laughs> um, since I did the expertise on certain skills, I have an eleven, like a plus eleven to stealth checks and a plus eleven to acrobatics. Like she's a uh, very sneaky and very agile, and I built a character to be like that. So like, yeah, she's more of like a stealth, stealth uh, ninja style. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you, you're pretty much gonna you're pretty much gonna get like a success on on pretty much every unless you roll like a what or maybe a one to four, you might you might not oh, su- you I might mean, not succeed on those. But... I mean, like even on a four on a stealth check, that's a fifteen for me. <laughs> so it's like that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's no, pretty good. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm looking at like. I wanted to make sure that I had uh, enough to be able to save people because that's, I feel like going to be one of my main things. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then some other things that made sense. So like my highest modifiers are uh, insight, medicine, persuasion, and religion are all plus fives for me. Okay. Um, That sounds about right. Which makes sense, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like I could probably be a little persuasive and I should know a lot about religion. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, and then I was like uh, going through, and it's like, okay, what languages can you speak? And it's like, okay, common. I feel like under common, probably fine, especially like working with people as you know, maybe a figure that's part of a religious organization. And then I feel like just because I have um, this demon sort of living with me at all times, uh, I probably know abyssal and infernal in oh, some absolutely. capacity. They can they can <laughs> at least translate for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh um, my god. I, I do want to mention my my equipment real quick. I had super bare bones. I didn't I didn't want to go super crazy with it. So I have my my twin daggers, and then literally I have her outfit, which uh, we we decided it's this has the same armor value as like a studded leather kind of thing. And then mm-hmm. um, she has some kunai to throw. I, I literally just wrote some kunai. I didn't write even write a number. And then she has thieves tools and a, a dungeoneer's pack, which I'm not even sure about the dungeoneer's pack to be honest. So I mean it's pretty bare bones. I don't. I don't have any like money or anything. We'll we'll decide that. We'll have, we'll let Kale decide that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah. all usually stuff that uh, that just comes with starting like in like a session zero or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyway, who do we want to go first? Uh, as yeah. let's uh, let's go through your um, your card, your hero. My card. And, uh, this is my card. Your card. Your card. Um, is this is this your so, card? Yeah, I mean, 
So I mean, so I mean, um, I don't know uh, how we can follow along with this. But obviously, audience at home, but uh, starting at level one or with with a ranger, um, it says you get a favored enemy. That's yeah. what I get first of all, a, fa- a favored enemy. Um, so this would probably be this would probably be some sort of. So, I don't know what I don't know. Haven't f- thought of his story yet, but I don't know what his favorite enemy might be. Probably something in in the pits, maybe like dregs or something like that. We'll see. Yeah, you can you can also choose like humanoids. I think. But can you choose humanoids yeah. as your favorite enemy? Just to be like you're. You just hunt humans. You're anything. Just yeah, anything human related. Um, anything that looks like a dude. I mean, let me pull up the thing. Oh, have you rolled up your stats yet? That's that's an important thing. I haven't, I no, I haven't done anything yet because I had to change. Okay, so let, change let's let's start so. with rolling Az's stats. I think that's a good place to okay. start. Yeah. So after you picked, so um, so Az, uh, you're a ranger. Uh, what uh, mm-hmm. race are you? Are you just a human? Just a human, yeah. Cool. So human, uh, human ranger. So we'll roll the stats. Do you have some dice with you or a thing to sim- simulate? I've that? got a I've got a, a internet dice thing here. Okay, mm. cool. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna roll. Four six-sided dice, but not all mm-hmm. added up together because you're gonna you're gonna subtract one of them. Um, okay. So what you'll need to do is you roll um, four six-sided dice and then take away the, the lowest number, and you need to do that eight okay. times. Eight times. I'll do that now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'm rolling once, so I get a six uh, sixteen, and I take away the lowest, which is a three. So I get what fourteen. Uh, it'd be thirteen. Sixteen minus three. Um, and then 13, yeah, so that's the first one. So here, you know, I can help a little bit. I can pull up, like, a word pad or notepad or document or something, and I can write the numbers down for you. So do we have eight stats, do we, or do we just... So, so there are six stats. We're going to make this a little bit more lenient. Typically, you just roll for the six stats, and then you assign them, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to roll for eight stats, and then you can get rid of the two lowest ones. Okay. Yeah. So we got a 13 first. All right, next next one. So 13 first. Uh, next is... Brilliant. A 13 minus the 1 rolled is a 12. Okay. And you're rolling 4 dice and then minusing 1, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Next one is a 12 minus 1 is 11. Okay. <laughs> next one is a 16 minus 2, so that's 14. It's not bad. Next one is 15 minus 2, so 13 again. Okay. Next one is 18 minus 1, so that's 17. That's very good. Uh, and next is 14 minus 2, so that's 12 again. 12. How many am I on now? 7. Mm, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes. And last one is... Uh, Nice loading. 18 minus 3 is 15. Okay. So getting rid of your lowest numbers, uh, which was an 11 and a 12. That leaves mm-hmm. you with 13, 12, 14, 13, 17, 15, which are all like pretty pretty beefy numbers there. That's, that's pretty sprout, well spread, I think. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So and you put uh, those into your into your strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Yeah. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. a- as a ranger, unless you want to do something weird, you probably want to put it into dex. Um, maybe some into strength. It depends on how much you want to focus into the bow and how much you want to focus into your your melee weapon. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be the high the highest one would be dex, then mm-hmm. then strength, then the rest. Yeah, you probably want a decent amount of constitution too, so you don't die, because that's that's your hit points. Yeah. And then I think rangers eventually get minor spell casting in D D. And that is, I wanna say is wisdom based, but I'm gonna have to go look it up. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's Winston. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, uh, you also get to choose yeah. a you also get to choose a um specialization. So you get you get to choose a uh, archetype. So you can choose to be uh, a hunter, a beast master. Uh, I know there's other ones, but I don't have them here. They're in like other books or whatever. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I think the one I was going to do was. Um, I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was hunter. But I think there was. I think it was in one of the other books. There was like a like a bounty hunter. 
style one. I think it might have been in Xanathar's Probably. Guide, potentially. Probably. I, I have Xanathar's um, Guide, but it's downstairs. It's downstairs. Yeah. So I think it I think it might have been on there. So it'll be one one variation of that, which I can I can have a look at later. Sweet. Um, I mean that will give you different attacks. So like uh yeah. for example, we're only going to level five. So for Hunter, for example, just a regular Hunter, at level three, you gain your choice of the following. Either Colossus Slayer, Giant Killer, or Horde Breaker, which is like, you know, mm. to give you different bonuses depending on what, what you're doing. Um, yeah, the Horde Breaker might be quite cool. So that's like when you attack an enemy, you can attack another one that's within five feet or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of gives you like you a can cleave. Then, you can, yeah, you can cut through multiple enemies, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Wisdom is the spell casting, yeah. Um, cool. So a couple things to note. And this is what I, I, I would write down. Like, I, I like to write these down on the side of my thing just to remind me. So, like, you as a, um, as a, as a ranger, at second level, you get to choose a particular fighting style, for example, as your specialty. So you can choose archery, defense, dueling, or two-weapon fighting. Um, so that's another thing you get to Definitely get archery. Pick. Yeah, so archery gives you a yeah. plus two attack bonus. You make with ranged weapons. Um, uh, cool. Yeah. Let's see. That was always going to be the case. Yeah. So you uh, have that. So... Also, at second level, you get to learn some spells. We can do the spells a little bit later, but you do get. Yeah, yeah. I can do those. I can choose those. Like when I know the the basics. Um... Let's see. For. Okay, so favorite enemies. Okay, so for favorite enemies, it's aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. Or you can choose either gnolls or orcs. Um, so I guess you can't choose humanoids, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and maybe that maybe that'd yeah, be that too would make good. Sense, wouldn't it? But uh, since we're doing it, since we're doing like flesh and blood style, um, you could either choose. Uh, like dregs or something, or you can talk with Kale to come up with something that would make sense for the world of flesh and blood. Yeah, so so I think so. Obviously, he's going to have ties with the pits, but obviously, he doesn't reside there anymore due to some form of event. I haven't sort of figured this story part out yet, and but maybe it's maybe it's going to be to do with the the creatures that are in the pits, like the dregs or the aberrations down there. So maybe something yeah, maybe just, along those lines. Yeah, maybe just aberration, because that is one of the types, in, even in the D&D book, that that's, you can just choose aberration. And I, I feel that dregs yeah, choose... are aberrations. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll just write that down as favorite enemy for now, because that makes sense. Sweet. Um, and, but yeah, but... Kale can, uh, can iron it out. And favorite enemy gives you advantage on all window wisdom survival checks to track them, as well as on int checks to recall information about them. So that means you just you know a lot about them because you've dealt with them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can also learn a language of your choice that is spoken by your favorite enemies if they speak one at all. <laughs> you can speak drag. Absolute. You can speak drag. Yeah. Oh. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In. In the Arachne uh, lore, Arachne originally was like living with the dregs, so they're not like all like mindless monsters. But they, you know, oh, uh, yeah, there we are. Um, um, let also uh, natural explorer as well. So natural explorer would mean that I'm particularly familiar with one type of natural environment. I'm reading it, reading this from the mm, book as yeah. well now. Yeah, I see. Um, the environment that I'm probably familiar with is um, just metrics and pits mm -hmm. i'd say as an environment i just know where everything is essentially um yeah in, so uh yeah in D, D, it's like oh choose arctic coast desert whatever or the underdark and mm -hmm. so let's just say instead of underdark it's the pits like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah that's right so cool. let's do that um sweet so i still need to so obviously all these all these little bits here so there's um, like so like another one is hit points so like that's you'll just have to figure out what your hit points are. And so mm. your hit points are your um so at first level it's 10 plus your constitution modifier. So um what is your constitution? But what what number did you pick for your constitution? Uh I haven't even did, did you write the numbers down? I didn't even write them down. Yeah, I have I have them down. <laughs> I have them down. So here let, let's let's uh so Let's do it from the top, okay? Um, and you can assign them as we go. 
So your number one is dexterity at 17. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I'm sorry. It, your number one is 17. You can put it wherever you want, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so the number two is cool. 15. And I would either cool, put yeah. I would either put that at constitution or strength. Um, the number three one is 14. Yep. And then you have two 13s to, to put in. Cool, yep. Yeah. And then the last one is 12. Nice. Yeah, I've done that. Cool. And then, um, are you using the the official like D and D character sheet to do this? Yeah, yeah. I'm just using the, the the actual PDF thing. Yeah, the edit, editable PDF. Sweet. That's that's what I have. Okay. So on it, it says like strength, and it has like the big the the, the big number, and then it has like a smaller place to put a number. Um, yeah. That's like your your bonus, and you get mm -hmm. one for every two over ten. So for example, a twelve, you get you get a plus one. Uh, on a twenty, on a twenty, you would get a plus five, and so you can kind of fill okay. fill that out to see what your 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 modifier bonus is. So, like for example, your yes. dex would be uh, six plus I mean, three. It would be three. Yeah, it would be three because you'd get it's yeah. six over twenty. Yeah. Cool. So I've, I haven't got any minuses, which is good. Yeah, any yeah. Pluses. I have. I I lucked out. I have a really low one. I have a nine, but it is not an eight, which eight would have been a minus one. <laughs> Would have been minus, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, cool. Cool. So, okay. Now that we have those done, now we can roll for your uh, stats, for your hit points. So, hit points, I said, is 10. For the starting level, it's 10 plus your constitution modifier. So, it's 10 plus whatever you you put in con. So, currently 12, then, for that. So, so constitution, is your constitution a plus two, then? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, that's your level one. And now we're going to roll for four level ups because we're level five. So okay. so it's, it's, it'll start as 12 plus. Here, I can help you with this too. So 12, and then we're going to add these. And so there's a couple ways to do, to do this. Some people literally just roll for it, and some people like to take averages. What I like to do is I roll, and then if you roll under the average, just take the average because no one wants a character that's a wet noodle and you die in like two hits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the way I play D and D is like sure. when I when I DM stuff when I play D and D I like to I err to the side of fun, but not necessarily overpowered. And so I don't like people being mm -hmm. the, the weakest possible. Um, so yeah. to do that, you uh, roll one d ten, um, plus your Constitution modifier. So this one does say one d ten or a six. So the way I like to do it is you roll one d ten, and if you roll less than a six, just take a six plus plus your con modifier, okay. which is plus two. So I'm going to do that four times, yeah? Yeah, four times. All right, cool. So let's do the first one. It is a seven. Cool, I'll write, I'll write that in. So I get plus seven? Yeah. Yep. I'll just I'll just write it. I'll keep track of them. So that you have 12 plus seven. Cool. Then the next one is five. So we'll just take that as a six then. So seven, six. Next one is a 10. Lovely pretty, old job. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, one more. Uh, next one is a one. We'll take, we'll take, yeah, see that that's where it, that's where it, it sucks. Are you adding the modifier to that? Because you get a plus two modifier to them. No, I'm not adding the modifier. I'm just giving you the raw number. Okay, cool, cool. So, uh, so the seven would have been a nine. Uh, the six would have been an eight, and then the ten would have been a twelve. And so we'll take the next one as an eight again, because it was a one. Oh, we'll, we'll say uh... it's a six plus two is eight. And so we'll just add that all up. Let me get my phone out to to add small numbers nice. small small numbers together but i want to make sure your no your your numbers right eight plus 12 plus eight so your starting hit points you can write in your hit point area is 49 okay 49 nice cool which is more um, than me i i have 46 villain has 46 but villain also has a higher con modifier than you she has a plus three she has a constitution of 16 um i think you get do you uh have you done yours as well bill your stats already uh yes i have them rolled and everything but i'm just not sure what stats i have to care about as uh as a cleric so what i There's would do if i wanted to like make a like a really optimal cleric is probably strength and constitution are both pretty important 
and then wisdom and charisma. And I can't remember which one is your. I think I think wisdom is your spellcasting modifier. Um, but it depends on what kind of cleric you want to be, I guess. Like if you don't want to be a big tanky cleric, then you don't really have to put as much into strength. For example, um, I like being clerics who just run run up and smash people with hammers. Um, yeah, I think I would like to be. You know, I don't want to die in one hit because I also want to help people out. But uh, one of the things that uh, I'm using for for everybody at home, something that used to be called Orc Pub, and that's what I know it as, but it's called Dungeon Master's Vault, um, which is sort of like a it, it's like an automatic, not really automatic, but uh, it prompts you to create your character with all these different uh, things. It isn't quite as um, fully fleshed out as doing it yourself because there are some things they couldn't add for, um, you know, IP infringement purposes and, and copyright and whatever. Um, mm. So that does help. But uh, I, the weapons that it prompted me to be able to use are uh, a crossbow and a warhammer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's so <laughs> both cool options. <laughs> Cr crossbow are great ranged Definitely. options when you have no decks. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so um, let's go back to to Az real quick because I think there's a lot of little fiddly numbers we can do real quick um, while we still have our yeah. st the stats in mind. Because you still need to fill in all of your saving throws and skills, right? Um, mm -hmm. So uh, at level 5, you have a proficiency bonus of 3. So you can put 3 in your proficiency bonus. Yeah. Um, for your movement speed... Uh, your movement speed is always 30 for a human, unless you have any bonuses or something like that, I think. Um, unless I'm on my motorbike, which is treble that. <laughs> um, <laughs> your initiative <laughs> is plus whatever your dex bonus is. So I have a plus five for mine, because I have 20 dex. So uh, it'd be whatever your dex bonus is, which I think you said was three. Cool. Plus three, yeah. Cool. And we, we might change this as, you, as we fill in more leveling up things, because... Um, you might choose to level up stats when you level up because you'll have a couple points where you get to choose to either pick a feat or a stat, and uh, That's right, yeah. we'll we'll do that retroactively. I like doing this first and then like filling it in as you as you as you go. Um, yeah. And so for your saving throws, you literally just put the number um, of your bonus there. So for example, um, I have a twelve strength, but a bonus of one, so my strength saving throw is one. Um. And similar. So you just, you just put in whatever your, your bonus is for, for your saving throws. Oh, okay, yeah. So copy and paste, yeah. Yeah, nice. so, so after you do that, then we'll fit, then we'll do your proficiencies, because you do, we'll, you will get a, a couple bonuses to those, but I put in the base ones first, and then, then I'll help you fill out the, the proficiencies. Yeah. Cool, yeah. So if that you have... Knows. Cool. And then you also get an additional plus three to strength and dexterity because you have proficiency in them. And so every time your proficiency goes up, your your bonus for that will go up. And um, on the on the spreadsheet, you can click a little. There's like little little circles next to the. Yeah. You cl the, click click the ones that are your bonuses. So click uh, strength and dexterity to have those highlighted. Yeah, done that. Cool. So like your dex should now be a plus six. I think it should just be six. That's right, yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. And then this is where it gets really fiddly. For the giant skill chunk below, you're going to do the exact same thing. And it should tell you what it is. So, like, acrobatics is dex, and so you just put whatever your dex bonus is. Um, oh, okay, yeah, got it. And you just fill them all in, and then you will you will add your proficiency bonus to a couple of those. Well, a lot of those, actually. But do that first, and then you can choose which ones to do. Because as a as a ranger, you actually get to choose three from a list to to specialize in. Nice. This is always the most cool. fiddly part of character creation is just putting all the little bonuses in. All the little bits in, yes. It gets it gets even more fiddly when you have proficiency, and then like me, I have proficiency in some, and then I have expertise, which is a rogue trait, which you get double. So you get. You get your bonus, and then Jeez. you get then you get double, which is why I have like eleven, like plus eleven to my stealth. Yeah. Um, so let us know Sweet. when you when yeah. you added in all of those. Um, I should think... figure out which ones I can choose. Uh, oh, so so to get proficiencies, so you can choose 
Animal handling, so you get to choose three from the list. Animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception, stealth, and survival. That's a lot. Um, I I don't know what I kind of... I definitely want... I definitely want... Um... So like, definitely want athletics and acrobatics for sure. So you can't pick ath- then, you can't pick acrobatics. It's only athletics from from this list to get the bonus. That's fine. So you can pick athletics, and then the other ones that I think are interesting are insight, investigation, perception, and then maybe stealth. There's also like animal handling and nature and survival, but I, I think insight, investigation, perception, and stealth are all useful. Yeah, so I'm going to go uh, insight, investigation, and perception, I think. He knows a lot of things. Okay, wait. Uh, so you get to pick three total. So you got athletics is one, and then you get to pick two more. So you can do insight. Investigation, perception, then. Okay, sweet. And then you get a plus yeah. three. You get a plus three to those, because those are all um, your proficiency bonuses. So you get an additional three yeah. on top of those. Sweet. Um, nice. Done those. Sweet. And then, let's see, what else is on here that's a little fiddly? Uh, there's your weapons and that kind of stuff, your equipment. Um, I'm not sure what I, you want to do for this. I, I kind of went for, like, a flavor thing for my character, like, her outfit. I'm like, yeah, it's like a, a, the equivalent of, like, a studded leather or whatever. Um, but you take yeah, that's, a... that's, that's, ex... oh, that's essentially what mine will probably be as well. It'll be more like a light armor, like light leather armor. Yeah. Um, so it probably will be studded leather, yeah, as well, similar to that. Yeah, like uh, so the can, uh... like officially, but like I said, you could just talk to Kale about it. Officially, you could choose either yeah. scale mail or leather armor, and then you can choose two short swords or two simple melee weapons. Uh, you always get a longbow and a quiver. You always get a dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack. But um, I think you wanted to do a more flavor to make your character the way they are. So um, yeah, exactly. So I can yeah. Stay tuned for, for, for more as to regards to what sword I might have and yes. bow I might have and all that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and like uh, we talked earlier, you also have a one magic item. Like one yeah, plus one equivalent. It could be whatever you'd like. Um, I just went for damage. Probably I'm... be the boat, the bike, I expect. Probably <laughs> the, bike, the bike, yeah. <laughs> you might be able to... <laughs> talk to Kel about the bike. You might be able to do like a special thing with that, like I did with my mask. Um, yeah, exactly. Because if yeah. it's like not combat oriented, um, mm. like if we're fighting in like a house, you're not. It's not like you're gonna have your bike in there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just drives it through the window or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like maybe you want yeah. like a, a, a your sword to be special or your bow to be special or something. Or maybe maybe yeah, you exactly. have like a magic quiver or something. I don't even know. Um, yeah. Um, and then but yeah i mean er, 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 everything else there's obviously a lot to go through on these so um yeah, the... for, for me it was just sort of revisiting how to plug all your stats in and everything else yeah. is just flame and flavor mm-hmm. really there's there's two more important things really um okay. they are your your special archetype and you said you wanted to do like a bounty hunter kind of deal um so there's yeah. there's getting that all situated and making sure you have your bonuses from that and then your um, your spells, because at level two you start getting spells. Um, mm-hmm. You should. There's a spell. There's a there's a, a a chart where you can see the spells. And then the final thing is since we're level five. Oh, you get an extra attack at level five. Um, oh yeah, I do. That's right. Yeah, and at, at level five you actually know four spells. Uh, you'll have. Yeah, so I can go into those um, when I figure out the the the, the other flavor that I need to yeah. figure out. Yeah, you'll have spells are quite a long winded thing. You, you want to look at this chart here. That's just like a yeah, it's just like a ranger chart. Um, you also have an ability score improvement. So you have one ability score improvement um, that uh, you yeah. got at level four. So uh, that means you can give another bonus to any of your um, any of your stats. I would recommend, I think, is it a a plus two? I think you can do two or pick a feat. I think that's how it works. You can either do two or pick a feat. Um, Feats are really, that's where it gets really another, like, fiddly. Where it's like, uh, for example, let's look up some feats. A feat would be like, 
two weapon fighting so you get like a bonus for fighting with two weapons or whatever um yeah it'll just be like more like more like fo ho like honed in skills wouldn't it be similar to what the what the what the rogue gets like the special the uh whatever the things are the yeah things yeah. you get um so i i ended up not choosing a feat i i chose uh, the ability score i just gave me a plus two for my decks so i had 18 decks i had like a perfect roll so i took the 18 decks and made it into 20 decks and so like yeah uh for you you could turn your decks into into i think it said it was 17 Mm -hmm. you could turn that into 18 to get to get the extra bonus to make it into a plus four bonus which is probably what i would do and then yeah. if you have any other break points which let me see you could do that as well to make to bump them up so you could turn it like, like a 15 into a 16 to get that extra bonus from that mm. you also have a, yeah, it's quite a few different things yeah you have a 13 as well so i would i would look into if you want to do that i would look into pu putting your 17 into an 18 and then either the 15 or the 13, uh, one more, to, to get that extra bonus. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so then it pushes up everything else, doesn't it? Yeah, and then you'll have to go back and then put up everything else that it, that it cared about. Um, yeah. But yeah, getting the decks up well, to like... 18 is really good, because then it makes your attacks better, makes your initiative better. Like, it just makes all your shit better. Cool. I'll write that down as ability score improvement, so I can either choose feat or yeah improve. Yep. You can either choose plus so two, plus two. So you can plus one or plus two. Um, you basically have like two points. Think of it as, as like Diablo or whatever. You're like you have like two points to put into any of your things or a feat. Sometimes the feats have bonuses as well. So sometimes the feat will give you like plus one to strength or whatever. Um, mm hmm. So yeah, yeah. Just look yeah. into that. There's a there's a there's a ton of feats that you can choose from. Um, yeah. Uh, and cool. yeah, then 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 it's the the choosing your specialization, like your bounty hunter or whatever, and your spells, and then you're good. Yeah. Yeah, and then That's the easy. the rest is just plugging in all of the things like uh for like your weapons and your bonuses. So remember when you're doing that. So like, for example. Um, you for the for the ranged weapons you use dex, so, um, so like for example my 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 black blades, um, they give me a plus one bonus, so they actually I actually get a plus six to my attack bonus because I have five dex plus the plus one bonus from the uh the dagger itself, so I have attack bonus of plus six, yeah. and then the damage type is also affected by my dex and the enhancement bonus, so it's like my damage type is one d four plus six. Plus the yeah. the on hit effect, uh, but if you have any questions with that, we can we can hammer that all out. That's pretty easy to 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 do. Um, yeah, for me for me it was just like getting all the stats in there because I could could not remember for the life of me how to do it all. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, now I know everything's plugged in. It's just everything else is now associated with that stat essentially, isn't it? So yep, yep. The um, yeah, the biggest good. the biggest trick when you're leveling up your character is just making sure you go back and make sure all the numbers are right and you you added the right ones that's in. right um yeah and then like i said I, I always like to put in all my my little bonuses in the there's like a big area where you can just write um there's a big area where you can just write things and i always just yeah. write all of my bonuses just to make sure like this is my mm. this is my old sorcerer vanilith look at him he's so handsome um <laughs> but he, uh, I, I wrote all this like he's a shadow sorcerer and he's got dark vision of 120 feet and he's got the darkness cantrip and blah 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 blah. So I just wrote all that stuff down. So yeah. when I'm actually playing, I can just look at and be like, oh, this is what I can do. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do as well. I think um, ev everyone's different with how they sort of remember information. So I yeah, think yeah, I think sure. I'm will, I'm going to be like you as well. I think I'm going to write it down <laughs> like, on a piece of paper. Yeah. So I think that will that will go into my memory more than just typing it up. So. Yep. Um, so yeah, definitely yeah. gonna do that. Um, and then let's get to Bill. Bill, okay. All right, what do you need, man? So thankfully, um, <laughs> with the use of this dungeon master's vault that I've mentioned previously, um, I've done all of the uh, the actual like stats and everything, and I think it's all correct. Um, it uh, it should like it, it automatically shows up with what my uh, total bonuses to any specific um, stat is. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, yeah, like my max HP, which was done just randomly um, for each of the level ups um, for each of the four levels. Uh, my total max HP is now 47 at level okay. five. We're all, uh, we're and all I am supposed to be close. tanky. So yeah, like my I have a 19 to constitution. Um, that was my that was my biggest one um, was that. And then I have oh. seven in dex and 11 in intelligence. <laughs> uh, um, not very bright. Uh, <laughs> uh, 10, 10 is like average human intelligence, but your dex, your your klutz. You know, like you like trip yeah. over your your scale mail or whatever. You're like, oh. I mean, which makes sense. The reason that I was on death's door may just be because I accidentally like walked off of a cliff or something. You were oh, you were in the please. great library of Solana yeah. taking out some holy texts and you tripped and then <laughs> fell off and fell like 50 feet. Yeah. Uh... And then and then, uh, yeah, the, the light, the beings of light just looked down and they were like, oh, my God. Not ours. Oh, like, not can ours. you help me? No, 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 no. Oh, that's good. That's brilliant. That's not us. Um, yeah, so I have everything for that basically done. I just Sweet. need to make sure that I... Uh, we've, we've sort of talked about what our, our magic item that we're allowed to, to take with us yeah. is. And I think what mine is going to be, I'm going to have um, like a reliquary that a piece of the, the demon that I've made this pact with sort of lives in. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most important part of it, I think in terms of like an actual gameplay thing, is just that it's going to be like... I don't know, a thing that talks to me or makes fun of people. Okay. Um, just like a narrative <laughs> style thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then maybe have some sort of, a, maybe it can like store a cantrip a day or something. Um, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. Like, like it resets on a long rest or something similar. Um, yeah. I feel like that would be, that would be like reasonable. It requires a decent amount of prep work and forethought um, um, to actually be useful. <laughs> So yeah. a lot of the stuff that at, that we went through with as applies to like, did you get your additional ability score improvement or your feet? Because you get that at level four. Um, yes, and you, um, you get a pick. I picked ability score improvement just because cool. feats aren't. Um, there's a, there's only one feat that's included in here, and I just don't have the the list of feats. Yeah, I mean, there's or any that I think would be useful. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool. them, but a, a lot of them are like very cornery things. Like if you want to use plate armor, for example, you can take a feat to be able mm. to be proficient in plate armor, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Or if you if you want to use a specific kind of weapon, like an exotic weapon or whatever, you could take a feat for that. Um, yeah, like I, I ended up just doing ability score improvement just so that I could increase my constitution. Cool. Because that's... that feels like something that I would do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the easiest one. Mm. Um, yeah. Be a long kid. <laughs> you also, at level two, you also get uh, channel divinity as an ability, but you also get your divine domain feature, which you get to choose one of the domains. Uh, and then you get a special bonus based on it. So... In the in the book here, the domains are the knowledge domain, uh, life, light, which could be very um, flavorful, uh, nature, tempest, trickery, and war. And that's that's what's in just the base base book. There's probably a couple more other ones if you wanted to yeah explore that. Uh, yeah, I feel like light probably makes. Uh, does light make the most sense? Because like I, uh, at least my you know my character I, um, uh -huh. was a uh, a good cleric, a light cleric, and then suddenly found myself in uh, uh the complete opposite, the upside down as a, as as you were. Uh, <laughs> I but, uh, I have a feeling there might be a shadow one as well in a different book. Uh, if yeah. you wanted to do shadow. Because like an unwilling shadow participant uh, could be interesting. Yeah, here let me. And is I th I feel like more in line with what I'm, uh, what my character would be. Yeah, let me see. Five e shadow. Oh, let me type in cleric. But even if there isn't, we could probably come up with some sort of. Oh, no, there is a shadow shadow domain. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Cool. Uh, you also gain. This is pretty funny. Um, you also gain proficiency with martial weapons, so you can use all of the martial weapons now, like great swords and um, battle axes and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Nice. Hell yeah. So I'm not sure what kind of weapon you want to have, but you can use almost any of them now. Um, at first level, your vision is able to pierce darkness, giving you 120 feet of dark vision and able to see in magical darkness. Sweet. Uh, Umbramancy. At first level, you're able to manipulate darkness as a bonus action. You may cause it to veil a creature no lar larger than medium size. Uh, change a five foot square of it to become magical, make your own shadow disappear, or manipulate the shapes of shadows. So you can do like weird shadowy stuff. Uh, you can have three effects. Channel Divinity Eclipse. And this is the last one you'll get because all the other ones are above six. Channel Divinity Eclipse, which is very on flavor uh, for flesh yeah. and blood. So at second <laughs> level, you can use your Channel Divinity to harness darkness, banishing light. As an action, you present your holy symbol maybe even your little phylactery dude. Um, as an action, you present your holy symbol uh, and any magical light within 30 feet of you is dispelled. Additionally, creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you must make a wisdom saving throw. Um, any creature uh, takes necrotic damage equal to 2d10 plus your qu cleric level on a, on a failed throw and half as much on a success. Uh, a creature that has total cover right. from you is not affected. So yeah, you can just be like, banish all the light and then do a like, giant AoE thing that just... Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, bring on the darkness, and everybody's like, no. Yeah, I mean, it's no. it's like flesh and blood yeah. theme, so it's like very like the you summon the eclipse, and like this big ske yeah. skeletal moon just comes across, and yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty on flavor with what I'm 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 trying to do. So that's great. That's that's awesome that that's just included. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's so there's those. Yeah, so uh, I, I would like to note now. I don't know if this is an official thing. It might be just like a homebrew wiki. But either way, I think it works flavorfully well. Yeah, if it's if it's overtuned, I'm sure um, Kale will be able to tell us. Um, yeah, but yeah. I feel like this is this was almost made for this specific situation. Uh, so it, it sounds like it fits in pretty perfectly. <laughs> okay, I've actually found the official D and D wiki. It's a little bit different, but yes, Shadow Domain does actually exist. It is a little bit different. But if you go to the D&D wiki, um, you can see all the Shadow shadow stuff. You get, you get it, it, it details all your bonuses, too. Like, you'll get a bonus uh, spells. Like, you'll get bonus domain spells, like Healing Word and Dissonant Whispers. Um, you'll even get Vampiric Touch at level 5. You get proficiencies in Deception and Stealth. And then the Channel Divinity is a little bit different, because I think the other one was a homebrew, but it's almost the same. This one's called Shadow of Nightmare, and it's it's kind of the same thing where you hold up your thing and deal AOE damage. It's 3d6 instead of, was it with 2d10? Um, yeah. Which might be better. So it's, it's almost the same thing. You can still do the big AOE thing, but at least this one details like all the stats a little bit better. Yeah, no, that's sweet. I'll just uh, yeah. plunk that into my notes for now. Um, and then I'm because uh, I'll have to just manually input some of these things with this thing that I'm using, um, but that'll work perfectly. Um, mm. One of the other things that I was kind of interested about was uh, the n potential name of my character. Oh um, yeah, yeah. What are your guys? What are your characters' names? So <laughs> I was trying. Like I looked at. I have the pages for the Solana and the Monastery up. Um, like for the lore or whatever behind mm -hmm. them um, to see if I can come up with like a theme that fits in and just so what sort of names I should be looking at. Like, should they be more sort of like middle ages or something that's really on the nose? Cause I know that's something that flesh and blood really likes to do. Um, but uh, I do want to, I do want to point out that uh, under residence under the demonastery page um there are a couple names there's like niall jerome uh aramis and then the very final one is steve um <laughs> oh, just, that's a, so good. just a dude named steve uh and his specialty lies in plants <laughs> steve hey, is a botanist <laughs> hey, of course you gotta have your your botanist in the yeah. demonastery um yeah. yes that's really good like my character I, I, it is very on the nose, like flesh and blood. It, it, the, it's spelled V I L L O N, and it's actually a French name. Um, yeah. It's like France, the, it took the name from Francois Villon or Villain or whatever, which is like a, a French yeah. poet. 
And that was actually the name of my World of Warcraft character for many years. My World of Warcraft, you know, Assassin Rogue. And I was like, oh, it's, mm-hmm. it fits so well with flesh and blood naming because it sounds like villain, like, oh, evil character. Uh, and they're an assassin. Um, so I went I went the very on the nose route. Um, yeah. Nice. Like, uh, like uh, as could be called Archer. <laughs> Just Archer. Oh, what? Was <laughs> Archer, it on, like Archer. Was it on the Living Legends <laughs> that we came up with those like really funny on the nose flesh and blood names? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, I think once upon a time. Like, like you have Archer and their name is like Fletcher or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Fletcher is yeah. good. Fletcher, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at. Uh, oh. I just looked up like D and D cleric pun names, and uh, this is not what I'm going to go with. But I just wanted oh. to point it out because it's great. Somebody mentioned that their first ever five fifth edition character was Eric the Cleric of Derek's Barracks in the Land of Ferric. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. <laughs> I used to joke, like, uh, I had a, had a joke character called uh, Bjorgen Jorgen of the Hjorgen Fjord, and it was like this barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorgen oh, Jorgen. Man. So yeah, yeah. A, 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 to, as can be yeah. F- Fletcher Dark Arrow or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Fletcher motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Fletcher hog. Um, <laughs> Fletcher yeah. in the ledger. Yeah. Fletcher uh, in the ledger. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So thankfully, uh, all of the nitty gritty stuff I think is done for me um, yep. with this thing. But it's just the like the other stuff. So yeah. like you know what we start with. That's going to be something that I think we're going to deal with in um, session zero. Like yeah, you're. How yeah. Much gold and whatever your big one is going to be your spells you just have to come up with all yeah. your spells yeah because you're gonna you yeah. have a lot more I'll spells than those up too. yeah i'll have to look those up and uh see because like obviously with the uh within the D wiki um it gives me four spells um yeah. that i have access mm. to just from leveling up because i mean i'm only even though we're level five we're like fourth level in our classes right yeah, so like for example, here's my my fifth level uh, sorcerer, and I've got like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have twelve spells. Sorcerer? My level my level five sorcerer has twelve spells. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, oh, so yeah. maybe there's even an additional two spirit guardians and vampiric touch. Oh yeah, you'll get them from being like shadow or whatever. Yeah. yeah. As shadow domain. So yeah, I'll have my my shadow domain spells as well as cleric spells. Um, I and think other stuff, so that's going to be lots of fun to put together. Yeah, I think the cool, the coolest yeah. part about being level five for a spellcaster is you get access to your third level spell. So, like my sorcerer mm-hmm. took lightning bolt, but third level spells are when they start getting really nice. That's where the lightning bolt and fireballs and that kind of cool stuff comes in. I don't, I don't know what it is for cleric because I haven't played cleric and anything outside of like yeah. Baldur's Gate, so I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, you're probably got something cool. Cleric spells, <clears throat> like the third, uh... third level cleric spells are probably like sweet. Create food and water. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> That's probably really good Pretty in the good. pits. It's probably really good in the pits. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't want to eat that, like, pits Ooh. food. I don't know, man. Something that I do want to uh, just reminisce about. In one D&D campaign that we played, uh, I was a... I forget what the name of it was. I think it was, like, not homebrew, but it was, like, Universes Beyond um, mm-hmm. or whatever that's that's called. Um, and it was a, a dwarf that was like part of a race of dwarves that are like made of stone. Um, and they had a bunch of different feats. Like there was a racial feat, I think, where I could swim through stone as though it were water, which was cool. That sounds right. Um, but yeah, he was like, he was like three foot two and like 600 pounds or whatever. Uh, and his name was Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> and uh, made a bunch of fun <laughs> stuff with that. And uh, the, that, the, I think the last thing that we did in that campaign was we were fighting against one of the big bads. I had, um, I had in large reduce and somebody else in our party had in large reduce um and so i cast enlarge reduce on myself to make i think it's like it doubles your height and multiplies your weight by eight or something um oh, it's something ridiculous so yeah, i yeah. got to do it twice on myself we could we checked with the dm and the dm was like yeah this is sick go for it 
So at the end of it all, I was like, I forget what this, it might not be double your height, because I'm pretty sure I was like 18 feet tall and like 25 tons or something. Um, I also had flight, uh, so I was able to fly up to like 100 feet or whatever. Uh, and I ended up choke slamming the big bad um, from like 100 feet up. Um, and then also oh. using my racial trait to like drag him underground. <laughs> Ooh. That's pretty good. It was dope. It was really cool. Um, because that just, that just uh, this list reminded me because it has meld into stone. And I think oh. that's sort of what my uh, my racial trait was. My, um, th this character, we, we were playing a homebrew campaign and uh, all the loot was random rolled on a random table. Like we, had, we, we did a lot of like randomly generated stuff. All the cities were like procedurally generated. We had like some tables. It was really fun. It was a really fun campaign. But on my very first uh, treasure chest, it was a really nice chest. I got uh, winged boots. And so I could fly. And so this character was overpowered as hell because literally start of combat, fly up 20 feet. And I'm just like, and I start just shooting spells down. Like just, I just, just start raining, raining death. People. And like, I love that. we're fighting like bandits and stuff. And they're like trying to shoot me with arrows. And I'm like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, good stuff. Absolute moon elf yeah. sorcerer just raining hell upon his opponents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's very... I don't know if I said it either, like, during the podcast or before. Boots. I, 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 He had very much of a, like, uh, tuxedo mask style. So he was up there, but he was, like, yeah. all, he was all sparkly and, like, yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I, I would do brilliant. things like... Just like, wave. Like, he makes, like, a pose when he when he does it and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, good that's stuff. so sick. I love d, &D. Um... Yeah, I, I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to be really good. And uh, yeah. now I know that I'm at least like 80% of the way there. I just have to do the the creative portion. But even that is uh, now I've at least put into words what I want to do. So that'll make it really easy to to sort of flesh that out. Yeah. Um, mm. So, yeah, really looking forward to this uh, coming to fruition. This is going to be really fun. Yeah. And if. Yeah, now <laughs> now that we've got it all on the podcast as well, it's just there's no excuse now because we've just yeah. Yeah. spent. I have to get it done, time. otherwise people are going to make fun of me. So. <laughs> yeah, be like, what the exactly. what the hell? So uh, if you've made it this far, I guess we should say uh, first of all, thank you for sticking through all the D and D crap. But also, uh, <laughs> but yeah. also, um, <laughs> we we're not. I don't think we're 100 percent sure when and how we're going to do this. Um, I don't know if we're going to live stream it or if it's just going to be like an edited video. Maybe both. I don't know. I don't know. Well, that that's yeah. going to be uh, to be determined, but we'd like to do it sooner rather than later. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. A, li a live stream would be good, you know, as long as like all the OBS scenes were set up and they could switch between them, you know, as we go to different places and stuff, that would be, it would be sick, but it also could be worth doing edited. But yeah, well, I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll get there, but it's going to be good nonetheless. It's going to yeah. be good quality. Yeah. Kale, Kale said he already started working on like an overlay and thumbnail for it so oh there we go yeah there we go oh and i will say this what, what what i'd very much like to do regardless of how we first present it i would love to have it just as an audio only version for all of you audio only listeners out there and we'll, we'll maybe upload yep. it as a special living legends thing so if you're already like subscribe to the living legends on whatever podcast uh, uh you know uh, provider of your choice uh, we should hope to have it uploaded on that as well shortly after yeah so yeah, yeah. So you can listen to our I mean, shenanigans yeah, on the way to work or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, it's like it's what it's one of those it's one of those experiences that you can have auditory as well. Mm. You know, because obviously it's just a storytelling. We're describing what we're doing and maybe maybe doing some stupid voices along the way. I so, uh, I don't have any current <laughs> ones that I listen to, but I used to listen to a couple for. M I was to say many hours, but it's got to be for like hundreds and hundreds of hours. I used to listen to one yeah. called uh, Dice Camera Action, and then I uh, listened to a bunch of the ones that Loading Ready Run did on their Dice Friends thing. All audio only, um, on my way to work and stuff. So, I think there's I think there's a lot of value there. So, yeah, exactly, definitely good stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that will just about wrap up this episode. Um, yeah. Once again, as Cal, as Cal mentioned, thank you very much for everybody who stuck it out with us. Uh, we really appreciate it as always. Um, and uh, hopefully we will be able to get this, as I said, sort of into fruition sooner rather than later. And then we'll have even more content for those who are uh, just absolutely fiending for flesh and blood related stuff. 
Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, until then, I uh, have been your host sometimes a little bit today. Uh, I am Bill from <laughs> the Spike Feeders. You can find me on Twitter at BillTSF, and you can also find me on YouTube at the Spike Feeders Fab. Uh, we have live gameplay content. Um, we actually have an episode that I believe is going going up. Um, well, for us right now, basically just telling these guys. Um, although no, because this mm. is going to come out tomorrow, right, Cal? Um, when, Wednesday. You're watching this on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> if, so, if you're watching oh, it wow. tomorrow. Yeah, okay. peek behind the curtain. The, that is tomorrow for us. It is Tuesday right now. Uh, so same day, uh, we're going to be releasing uh, the first episode of our new uh, Azalea Goliath Gauntlet. Ooh, um, nice. So if you haven't already checked it out, if it is if it's already up, then feel free to go check that out. Yeah. It's really fun. We have a new special guest, one of our local players and a good friend of mine. His name is Jay. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a ton of fun. So you should definitely go check that out. Nice. Um, next nice. in order alphabetically. Uh, I mean, I'm B, so I'm actually after A, but as um, <laughs> where can the people find you? Yeah, definitely. So, so I'm as from uh, Go Again Gaming. Find me on Twitter at uh, Go Again Gaming AZ on Twitter. Um, and um, speaking of Azalea Gauntlet, are you free tomorrow, Bill? Or <laughs> yes, uh, and I will be playing Katsu. I believe is what we landed on. Nice. So and that was predetermined, right? Okay, nice. Yeah. Just for a double check. <laughs> you guys um, playing a yeah. C but, um, CC or Blitz? CC. Okay, okay. CC still, yeah. 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 Um cool, yeah. So that's that, that's that's one that's one piece of regular content. But um I'm finally finally coming to the end of the first Ultimate Pit Night video, which is gonna come out probably next week. Um and um timed it fairly well because obviously the professor's video is getting a lot of eyes on it, so maybe people might be searching for UPF stuff. Um and uh due to have uh, the other episode start being edited, which you feature on as well, Kel. Yeah, that was um, a good one. So that'll be that'll be coming out um, maybe in a month or so. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Loads of good stuff coming up, and uh, with that, I'll throw it over to to Red Zone Rogue over there as well. Hello, um, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue. All that, all that stuff you probably already know. I. Uh... <laughs> The only thing I want to say that I have coming out today is on the official Flesh and Blood YouTube channel, there will be the second of the skirmish gauntlet season going live. And I asked uh, As and Bill if they're playing CC or Blitz because this match is going to be me playing Katsu. Um, it's skirmish, so it is, it is oh, Blitz. Oh, nice. And um, I'm playing Katsu, and it's fun. And um, I won't spoil the guest, but the guest is someone you will definitely recognize. So, yeah, we had we had we had as on the first one. If you haven't seen that, you can go watch the one where I play Azalea. As plays, I mean, as plays Azalea, I play Uzuri. What? Um, <laughs> you should go watch that one. Uh, the next one yeah. is someone else. It's not Bill, but may, you might you might see Bill Maybe. in the future. Right? We'll 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 see we'll see. But it's possible. <laughs> but but. Anyway, go check go check that out. I don't know what time they're posting it, but I think they're going to post it sometime on Wednesday. So, yeah, sweet. If it's nice. not, if they didn't already post it today, I don't know. New Zealand time. They're like in the future or something. Um, they are, yeah. So, there's that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you all. Yeah. yeah anyway, um, that will officially wrap up this episode, this fantastic D and D centric episode of uh, the Living Legends podcast. Thank you to everyone, as always, for uh, hanging out with us today. Uh, really appreciate you. Uh, and until next time, stay well, stay safe, and we will catch you all in next week's episode. Bye. Cheers.